It is your man on fire mentor, David Miller. Today's message where we are going to dive into the center of the fire. Yes, all of us together are going to dive into the center of the fire. And we're going to discuss a hot, a hot, hot, hot topic of what is the easiest way to fix your marriage? So I have the luxury, the privilege, the honor of serving men, well over 10,000 at this point. Uh, the common theme is these men want to be better men, want to be better husbands, want to be better fathers, want to live into the fullness of their potential. I believe that deep down all men want to make sure that their last breath is one of freedom, one of joy, one of triumph, one of victory, one of knowing I did it, I served, I loved, I gave with every ounce of my being while I was alive, rather than one of regret, which I know my father didn't go out the way that he wanted to go out. He spent his final years in a nursing home with dementia. And I can promise you, he didn't sign on for that consciously. And no man wants to go out that way. You want to go out knowing that you left it all on the table and that you gave everything you could in this lifetime and you served with every ounce of your being. So one of the main pain points for a man, sadly, is that his marriage is something that creates stress for him. Most of us are crushing it in business. Most of us are business owners or some high level where we know how to generate money, right? We know how to have abundance and prosperity. And if you're a man listening to this and that's not you, I promise you that you're fully capable of 10Xing, maybe even 50, 100X, whatever you're currently doing. And the only thing that's in your way is what's in between your two ears. It's called your brain, it's called your mind, and everyone's mind has a tendency to have limitations. So you find your way into a culture, culturative community, if there's such a word, into a community that will wake you up and remind you that you're bigger and you're better than most likely how you're showing up or the limiting beliefs that you're holding on to. So in the Man on Fire world, we're always here to shake you up and remind you of the greatness, the bigness of who you are, that you're an extraordinary and a phenomenal creator. You're a leader where you were born for so much more than is likely showing up in your life. And there's no judgment for where you're at, but at the same time, there's a responsibility that you'll be held to for living into your full potential. And more often than not, men need some form of challenge, some form of accountability and uh, support in order to have enough momentum, enough leverage to sustain their motivation, sustain their drive, sustain their hunger, which all dies on its own. But when you're in a supportive culture, more often than not, you can get results that you might not have even fathomed for yourself. You might not have believed is possible for you. So today's topic, as we dive into the center of the fire, is what's the easiest way to fix your marriage, right? Because if that's a huge pain point for men, like most of us job well done, you know, we provide, we protect, and then all of a sudden you start learning Oh my God, I, there's this whole other thing where I got to be present and I got to have presence and I got to come home from work. And even though I, I was giving everything I had at work and I just want to come home and, and veg on the couch and unwind a little bit. Now my wife, you know, wants to talk about her day or I have to hold space for her. And now I have to be present with the kids. Even the dog wants some of my attention. Like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to juggle it all? How am I going to balance it all? And little by little by little, a relationship starts to fall apart. There's many, many reasons, you know, that could range from affairs to a man dropping his presence and not being present in the relationship. And then there's, you know, hidden reasons like the pain that a woman endures when a man has so much more potential, but he's not really accessing it. He's not living into it or he's not really showing that he wants that for himself. Right. A lot of us can fall into what's called a complacency coma where we just are okay with being fair or good or average, which is such a lie that we're selling ourselves. And it's not to say that you're not an amazing person, you still are, but to sell yourself short of what you're capable of also means you're selling people in your life short. And so most men don't really know the pain that a woman or the children endure if the man himself is not really stepping into the fullness of who he can be. This has nothing to do with what her roles are, responsibilities are, uh, what she might have to take ownership over in the relationship and what is she contributing to the relationship. I'm not talking about that this moment. I'm speaking more directly to the man because my uh, coaching is of men and it's to make sure that you are showing up powerfully as the creator that you are in your life. And when you're not, 
in the different domains of your life, at least one of them is going to be hurting. More often than not, that's the marriage. So what's the easiest way to fix your marriage if there's problems in your marriage? Well, let me preface by saying Man on Fire, the company itself, we're not here to help any man fix anything. Why is that? Well, because we don't see things through the lens of fix or broken. We don't see things through the lens of fault and blame, right and wrong. We understand it. We respect it. However, vibrationally, like as a frequency, to try to fix something is a lot different than what you're committed to creating, right? There's language matters. So when you want to fix something, you're assuming it's broken. And usually if you're using that languaging, there's a lot of finger pointing where there's naming, blaming, shaming, judging, and projecting. And we've been, you know, in culture to really want to point our finger at somebody else. So a woman might point her finger at the man. The man might point her finger at the woman. And you're going to get nowhere by trying to be right. And I always ask men, do you want to be right or do you want to be free? So what is the easiest way then to fix your marriage? Well, number one is to give up trying to fix it. And number two, to take a look in the mirror. Because if you want to have a different relationship, it starts with the relationship that you're having to yourself. Because the relationship that you have with people is a reflection in a mirror for how you relate to yourself or said differently, for the parts of you that maybe have been laying dormant, the parts of you that maybe we would call the shadow, the parts of you that are hiding underneath the carpet that you swept under there and said, I don't really want to take a look at this. So we have who we see in the mirror, which usually if a man's very honest with himself, he'll say, I don't feel good about myself. I don't love myself. I feel a little bit like a fake or a fraud or a phony or not good enough. Um, I got shame. I got guilt. It's very rare that I meet a man that says, yes, when I look in the mirror, I love who I see. That, that's painful right? For me to hear, my team to hear, like we want you guys to love yourselves. So there's the image of who you're seeing, right? Because the mirror reflects it back to you. Then there's the image that you want to sell to the world. And then there's your marriage, which will reflect very similar to what the mirror reflects. Because when you are not living into who you want to be seen as, it's painful for your partner. And so there is some form of hurt in her eyes. There is some form of um, feeling like she's been sold short. And a man generally doesn't know what to do with that pain. So the tendency is to get defensive. The tendency is to get headstrong. The tendency is to uh, point fingers and to get um, more into your head, more into your mind, and unfortunately, away from your heart. So what is the easiest way to fix your marriage? Well, the first easiest way is to give up trying to fix it. And the easiest thing to do is to then recognize, well, if I want to have a different marriage, I have to actually become a different man. Well, some of you might be wondering, well, what about her? Doesn't she have to change? Also, I mean, we've heard the expression, it takes two to tango. What if I'm with a partner that doesn't want to change? She doesn't want to grow. She thinks it's all me. I'm asking you guys to just put that to the side and as a man and as a leader of the household, as the captain of the ship, you must steer the ship where you want the ship to go. And in this case, the ship is your marriage and you want to take it to an island called, I love my marriage. I have passion, I have trust, I have communication, I have intimacy. I mean, maybe it's fair to say eight or nine out of 10 men would say that they don't really have all those things. There's a breakdown in communication or a breakdown in trust, a breakdown in the passion, the intimacy and the love, or many guys might hear things like, um, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, right? Or many of you, you know, have fallen into that trap of being the pleaser or the yes man, turning her to mom. Many of you are sleeping on the couch and you're just living as friends. Or even if you do have some form of physicalness with your wife, it feels more mechanical and chore-like. So how do you fix this? Well, the antidote is always the same in the man on fire world. We're not here to give you some magical pill potion, lotion, genie, suggestion, advice, that's just going to make it all go away. That's just going to make all the pain, all the discomfort, all the heaviness, just remove it instantly and bam, snapping your fingers, everything changes. It doesn't work that way in life, right? It takes time to grow what shows up on the farm, watering, the right soil, the right sunlight, what you feed in life will grow. So 
what's the antidote? The antidote is this. The antidote is you as a man must be willing to grow yourself. You must be willing to recognize that if I want to have a different relationship with my partner, it's not about changing partners because everywhere you go, there you are. What does that mean in English? It means you take your bag of shit with you. It means you take your problems with you. It means you can't outrun you. You can't outrun what you haven't faced. You can't outrun what you haven't healed. And more often than not, when you come into another relationship, your same problems show up. And all you've done is change what's external to you, which is your partner. But you haven't made the fundamental changes on the inside. You haven't changed yourself. You haven't grown yourself. You're still vibrationally at the same level. It's like hitting a note and it always sounds the same. So if you're the same tone, if you're the same frequency, if you're the same, then your relationship will keep having the same outcomes. So if you look at it in terms of just like a basic science experiment, A plus B equals C. Well, in order to have C change, you don't have to have A and B both be different. Only one of those has to change. So you're A. If partner A plus partner B equals C, which is the relationship, all you have to do is work on A because now A is no longer A if you change, if you grow, if you exchange into a more congruent and authentic version of you. So now A plus B no longer equals C. This is why more often than not, it's not so much about, well, what doesn't she have to do the work? Doesn't she have to change? Doesn't she have to take some of the blame? Doesn't she have to take some of the responsibility? What if she's the one that had the affair? Again, put that all to the side. That way of thinking is not serving you right now. If it was serving you, you'd have a different outcome, but you're still in pain. And so I'm inviting you into filtering this and seeing this from a different lens. So what's the easiest way to fix your relationship? Again, we're not looking at it through the lens of fixing. Well, maybe we could change the question. Who do I need to be? How can I be different? How can I exchange? And to what version of me can I exchange where I can have a new outcome in my relationship? What is it that I need to do in order to earn my way back into her heart? Now, even putting her to the side, don't you want this for yourself? Don't you want to show up as a more powerful man? Don't you want to show up with more integrity, with more honor, with more commitment? Don't you want to no longer give in to your impulses where maybe you're, you know, playing video games all the time or scrolling senselessly on Facebook or getting a hit off of somebody on Facebook or on Instagram and, you know, leaking your energy all over the place, pornography, strip clubs, massage parlors. Who do you want to be? You want to be the guy that is like everybody else. You want to be uh, average where the best of the worst meet the worst of the best. Do you want to be at the bottom of the totem pole or do you want to be the leader that you know you were born to be? That decision only you can make. And gentlemen, more often than not, a relationship will reflect back to you where you're at in life. It's not filtered through blame and fault. I have enormous empathy and compassion for where you might be at in your relationship. I have enormous compassion and empathy and love and forgiveness for where I was at earlier in my life, which led to a divorce because I wasn't in the fullness of my maturity. I wasn't a masculine leader. I wasn't containing my energy. I didn't know how to fully protect the heart of my wife at that time of my life, which was 15, 16 years ago. And that's painful. That's painful because we're all good guys, right? We all, nobody really wants to hurt somebody else. However, when you stop, when you stop growing, just like a water, a, a plant or a tree that's no longer watered will die. When you stop watering yourself, when you stop feeding your hunger to grow, to up level vibrationally, to become a new version of you, well, then things in your life are going to die, whether that's your career, whether it's your finances, whether it's your health, whether it's your marriage, what you don't feed will no longer grow. And so I invite you guys to take this out of the box of trying to fix your marriage. If, if anyone has been following me for a while and that you want to learn like, well, how do I fix my marriage? I would tell you Man on Fire is not the right program for you. I would say go sign up for one of those programs that tells you say this, do this, say this, and then say this. I mean, here's the thing, guys. You could say all the right things, but if you're vibrationally, the tone of who you are, the energy that you give off, if it doesn't match your words, game over. Because people don't really care about your words as much as they care about how they're experiencing you energetically. 
and they'll remember you from the experience they had, which is based on your energy. And if the energy is incongruent with the languaging, the words that are coming out of your mouth, it might sound good. You might have read it in a book, heard it from a different program, but at the end of the day, this is not a thing where you're trying to trick your partner. This is about you being authentic with you. This is about you up-leveling yourself. This is about your hunger, your desire, your commitment to wanting to grow and be a leader that you know you were born to be. And more often than not, when a man chooses a path of growth, it's incredible to witness what will happen in his marriage. His partner all of a sudden starts to feel safe. She starts to let down the guard. Some of the bricks come off of the wall. She starts to reveal herself to you. She starts to trust you again. She starts to show you the tears again because you're no longer defensive. You're no longer trying to prove yourself. You're no longer gaslighting her. You're no longer coming from your head, but instead you're coming from your heart. You no longer personalize what she says to you. Even if she says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Even if she says, I'm no longer attracted to you. Imagine how amazing it would be to be so in your power that those words just pass you like the wind because you're sturdy, you're steady, you're rooted, you have fortitude, you know who you are. She just wants to feel that. She wants to feel the conviction and the knowingness of who you are. She wants to witness you claiming your life, putting the sword in the ground, declaring who you are, showing the world who you are, not robbing yourself short or cheating yourself or cheating others of the fullness of your potential. And I promise you that if you commit to that path, You'll either have the passion, the trust, the intimacy in your marriage with your current partner because you'll be able to restore it through integrity, no tricks, no games, no fixing, or you'll come to the recognition that this partner that I'm with, I will always care about her, I will always have love for her, but this is not the partner that I'm going to be growing old with. You will have recognized that you sold yourself short and it won't be by blaming her, it won't be by fault. It won't be through judgment. It'll be through empathy, compassion, love, and grace. You would be able to let her go. But for guys that are still pointing their fingers, I assure you the problem is not her. The problem is always us. We are not aware of where we're selling somebody else short. Now, I get it. A lot of you might feel trapped in your situation. You might have children. You might not be able to leave. Okay, well, that's your choice. That's your choice. And, you know, maybe you, you feel like she's always coming at you with venom. She's coming at you with harshness. She's coming at you with, with coldness. Well, you can grow yourself to a place where you become unwavering, imperturbable in the face of that energy, where it doesn't knock you off of your center. Well, what if it gets to a place where it's, it's too toxic? What if it gets to a place where she's being physically abusive? What if it gets to a place where it's no longer healthy? Well, you have to create a healthy boundary. You have to not allow that energy to pull you to a lower state, to a lower version of yourself. You have to make sure that through a deep level of self-respect that you know how to handle situations like this, which might include removing yourself from the situation. It might include leaving the home to avoid something that's not healthy for you or for the children to witness or to watch. But I don't mean running away because you're scared and you can't face and you can't confront. I mean, you do it from a place of power. So for most of the men out there that are, you know, wanting more joy in their marriage, it's going to come from your willingness to grow yourself. If you are codependent, if your source of happiness comes from how she sees you, you've externally sourced what makes you feel good or what makes you happy and there's that frenetic energy and you're seeking mommy's approval, there's a good chance there's some victimhood going on there. You just haven't claimed yourself yet. And that's okay, right? There's a starting point for every man. There's a starting point for me. And there's no finish line. But you have to be honest with where you're at. Are you stepping into taking action to move you towards the fullness of who you could really be in this lifetime? Are you courageous enough to go after your full potential? Are you crushing it in business? Are you crushing it with your finances? Are you giving, loving, serving with every ounce of your being? Not so people will like you, not where you're, you become the pleaser and the yes man, just so you can get people to like you, which is really just you know a hidden way of feeling better about yourself. But I mean, you're doing it because you were born to be that man. 
and you refuse to sell your soul short of what you came here to do in this lifetime. That's your antidote to fixing your marriage is grow yourself as a man. Grow yourself where this woman would be out of her mind to not want to be with you. And if she's not ready to do the work or she's not ready to let you back into her heart, then you'll move on, but you'll do it with respect. You'll do it with grace. You'll do it with dignity. You'll do it with compassion. You'll do it with empathy. So this is for the man that needed to hear this today, that it's never about fixing the marriage. There is no quick fix. There is no magical pill, potion, lotion, or genie. And even if you're saying, you know, she forgives you and says, I forgive you, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Your marriage will always reflect exactly where you're really at. And you can't fake your happiness. You can't fake your joy. You can't fake where you're at in your spiritual evolution. Life will always slap you in the face and tell you exactly where you are. Your relationships will tell you exactly where you are. The mirror will tell you exactly where you are. And that's tough truth. That's tough truth. And man on fire is for the man that is ready to do the work. He's done pretending. He's done hiding. He's done with the games. He's done with the naming, blaming, shaming, judging, and projecting onto others. And he's ready and he's genuine about his growth as a man. He's ready to be the better man the better husband, the better father for himself and for humanity. And if that's you, let us know. But if you want that quick fix, we are not the right community for you, which is perfectly okay. Still follow all my lives, but don't reach out in terms of trying to speak to one of our coaches about our coaching programs, which, re which require an investment in money and an investment in your time. All right, guys, I wanted to cover this topic today because I know that marriage is a sticking point for a lot of us. And, uh, there's no woman out there that's really going to fill you, right? This whole Jerry Maguire thing of you complete me. Like you got to complete yourself, right? You, you be the cake and the, your wife is the cherry, right? But too many men, they source their happiness trying to turn her into the cake. She's responsible for making me happy. Right? This is a lower level of thinking, like the way we were in junior high school or high school, the puppy dog love. And then as soon as that feeling's gone, then what? Then we blame our partner. She does it to you, you do it to her because we think that we're supposed to bring each other a certain feeling. And once that feeling's gone, then we say, oh, well, I still love you, but I no I'm no longer in love with you. It's an illusion. Fall in love with yourself. Learn to love yourself. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to do the deeper spiritual work. It can't be handed to you. It's not going to be a passage in a book. It's going to come from your spiritual growth. It's going to come from your spiritual evolution. This is what will be required. Are you willing and ready to do the work? All right, guys, it is your man on fire, mentor David Miller. Here's to you. Yes, you rising with passion, with power, and with purpose, and standing as the masculine leader that you were born to be, living into your full potential. So your last breath is one of joy, triumph, victory, and freedom. Knowing you gave, you loved, and you served with every ounce of your being. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon.